Hi, I'm Dr. Erica Feuerbacher. I'm an associate professor at Virginia Tech. And my co-authors are um, Clive Wynn, who is at Arizona State University, Leanne House, who's here at Virginia Tech with us, and my graduate student who worked on this project, Lindsay Isernia. He investigated uh, dogs and wolves' preference for human interaction or food when given a concurrent procedure. And one of the things that we did here was we tried to deprive them equally of food and their owner or caregiver, which hadn't been done before. So we were interested in uh, looking at dogs and wolves um, preferences for food and social interaction. What we found was that generally dogs engaged more with their human, uh, their owner, compared to wolves, their caregiver, when given this concurrent choice. This lines up with prior research uh, in which um, dogs have been shown to have more sociability uh, than, than wolves do towards humans. Uh, while we didn't directly test the hypersociability hypothesis, our results do align with that, although there could be a number of really interesting reasons why we see this difference in behavior in, in dogs and wolves, including their recent rearing history, uh, their phylogenetic history, uh, how they experience deprivation from food. So both species were deprived of food for about four hours and maybe dogs feel uh, less deprived than, than wolves do. So there are lots of really interesting in, um, possibilities for why we saw the results that we did. Um, so along with looking at the time, the proportion of time they allocated to food or their owner or caregiver in our concurrent choice, we also looked at dogs and wolves first choice, meaning which alternative did they approach first. And more than, more than wolves, we saw dogs approaching their owner first at a, a much higher proportion compared to food. So in a number of trials, the, um, the number of dogs approaching the owner first was nearing 80%, whereas the wolves were, you know, around 10%. There's only one trial, trial three, where uh, we saw wolves approaching the human um, at a higher frequency in, in that first choice than, than food. So again, we have a couple of metrics there that suggest there's some differences in how dogs and wolves respond to a choice between a familiar and hopefully a preferred uh, human, uh, their owner or their pr uh, primary caregiver uh, versus food. Again, we can't say exactly what the reasons are for those differences and hopefully that will spur more research. Um, one of the things that we tried to do with this research <laughs> is we had looked at dogs' preferences between food and social interaction, either from a stranger or from their owner um, in, a, in a prior study. And one of the things that was a little bit of a limitation on that study was that we did not equally deprive them of food and their owner. They were more deprived of food than their owner. Um, and so with our own dogs, we did see them preferring food, um, tending to opt more for food than the owner. Um, and that could be one of, one of the reasons why we saw that, um, uh, that, that they allocated so much responding to the food. So this, this study was um, you know, kind of a follow-up a bit to that of, well, let's see what happens when we equalize how deprived they are of the human and food. I think the uh, one other thing to really think about, which is interesting is, you know, we had an operational definition of deprivation, which was at least four hours deprived of, of both the owner and food. What that experience is like to the animal though, we still don't know and that could further be explored. So me being deprived of food for four hours versus being deprived of my favorite person for four hours um, could have different effects and, and different experiences for the animal. So even though we deprive them equally, um, you know, physiologically and behaviorally and, and experientially, um, you know, we, we still need to dive into that a little bit more to see are there differences there. I've seen lots of good research come out of Peer J. Uh, we had a prior study um, looking at shelter dog welfare published in Peer J, and I think we enjoyed the experience. Um, and so when we were thinking about uh, this work, which again, we thought um, might be interesting and useful to a wider audience, um, we really looked at an open access journal and had enjoyed working with Peer J prior.